Here we'll look at two different kind of quantifiers for predicates. The first of which is the universal quantifier. And the universal quantifier is telling us that our predicate is true for all values of x in the domain. Any number in the domain that you stick into this predicate will give a true statement. And this is how we usually denote the universal quantifier, this upside down a, x, p of x. And this is read for all x, p of x. So let's look at an example. Here I have that p of x is equal to x plus 1 is less than x. And I want to know if this is true for all x, p of x. So you can try some numbers and stick them in. Try 0. That would give us negative 1 is less than 0, which is true. We could try 27. That would say 26 is less than 27. Also true. If you actually want to prove this is true for all x, you would have two options either stick in every single possible number, which would be a little more difficult, or try to prove this. And in this case, if I try to subtract x from both sides, I'm left with negative 1 is less than 0, which we know is a true statement. Therefore, this is true. Another example, q of x means for, all, or for x is greater than 0, and we're going to look at for all x q of x. So what this means is that all numbers are greater than or equal to 0. And this is where it's really important to distinguish your domain. If we're looking at the domain of natural numbers, this would be a true statement, or the domain of positive integers. In this case, we're going to let our domain be equal to the real numbers. We know that not all real numbers are greater than 0. For instance, negative 1 is not greater than 0. If we want to prove a universal quantified statement is false, we need to just find a single example where it's false. One more example. If I let p of x be equal to x squared is less than 10, and this time we're going to specify a domain of all positive integers not exceeding 4. And then we want to say for all x, p of x. Well, we can check 1 is in the domain, since it's positive and doesn't exceed 4. We know that 1 squared is less than 10. 2 is also in the domain. 2 squared is less than 10. 3 is also in the domain, and we know 3 squared is less than 10. We know that 4 squared is not less than 10. However, the question is, is 4 in the domain? And since 4 does not exceed 4, it is. So this would be a false statement because of the counterexample 4. Next, we'll define the existential quantifier. And the existential quantifier tells us that there exists an element x in the domain such that our predicate p of x is true. So this just says there is at least one. There could possibly be more than one in an existential quantifier. It's just that we need a minimum of 1. And we denote it by this backwards e. And this is read for some x, p of x. So let's do some examples. If x is, p of x is, stands for x is greater than 5, we say there exists an x such that p of x. And we can see that this is true, since we can think of a number that is greater than 5. There are lots of numbers greater than 5. However, we don't need only one, we just need at least one to make this true. Another example, there exists an x such that q of x, where q of x is x equal to x plus 1. To show that an existential quantifier is false, we would need to check every single number and show that they all result in a false statement, or find a different way to prove it's false. Here if I subtract x from both sides, I'm left with 0 equal to 1, which we know is false. So this is false. There is no number that if I add 1 to it, I didn't change. So as a brief summary, for the universal quantifier, if it's true, that means it's always true. If it's false, we only need to find one counterexample. So we need to find one number where it doesn't work, or one situation where we get a false statement. 
There may be more than one, but we only need to find one. For existential quantifiers, if it's true, then we need to find one example where it's true. It could be true in multiple examples, but we only need to show one of them. To show it's false, we need to show that this thing is always false, no matter what numbers I stick in.